Hello and welcome to a video where I'm going to go through the worst types of players to have on your team or even in your squad. There are 10 types in total, but I'm sure there are many more that you guys could tell me about in the comments. I'd also like to know if you've come across these 10 sorts of players and whether you find them annoying or not. At number 1 we have the fuck noob team guy. Now this is something that pretty much everyone on the PC version of the game will have experienced. Here's the scenario. Your team loses for whatever reason and one guy starts raging in the chat and calling all of you noobs. You check out his score and realise that he's sitting at the bottom of the scoreboard with 2 kills, 10 deaths and no flags capped. For some reason he thinks that flaming at his teammates will fix the problem of his bad skill level and low score, but we all know that it won't. At number 2 we have Idiots in the Behemoth. You play in Argon Forest, you're already pretty tilted because that map is a clusterfuck of grenades, automaticos and Model 10A hunters. Your team is losing, you get a behemoth, and some dude takes it, not knowing what to do with it. He doesn't cap any flags, he doesn't take up any good positions, and just sits there pulling the horn for 5 minutes until the whole thing explodes and your team loses horribly. These idiots are 1 out of 10 gamers and should be booted off the server for the good of everyone as they're not only ruining the chances of your team winning, but also giving normal players a huge headache with their mind-numbingly stupid actions. Next up are the idiots in vehicle secondary seats. This was a huge problem in Battlefield 4 and has transferred over to Battlefield 1. Shooting at random stuff, shooting at the wrong stuff, and not shooting at anything at all. These guys will do it all and in the process will usually get you and other squad mates killed. The worst is when you're in a plane or a bomber and an idiot has taken over the very important rear gunner seat. When an enemy plane attacks you, there's not much you can do as the pilot unless you switch to the rear seat or get a teammate to help you out. If the idiot is hogging the seat, you'll almost certainly die. Surely DICE should have made a little training scenario for new players, so at the very least they know to look out for enemy planes when they're in the rear gunner seat, or even introduce a button where the pilot can boot out the gunner after a certain amount of time if he hasn't gotten any kills or been useful. Number 4 sees squad leaders not giving orders. Squad orders in Battlefield 1 are mega important. You might not know this, but working together as a team can be greatly improved with a really simple command such as attack B flag. Unless you're on comms with each other, it's actually quite hard to coordinate an effective attack on the same objective and the squad leader role is there to help sort out that problem. When you have a squad leader that does nothing useful however, the problem remains. I know that you can boot the squad leader out and replace him, but often you'll just get another useless idiot who doesn't spend any time thinking about what objective to cap, rendering the squad leader role useless. Next we have the no ammo guy. I've mentioned this problem in previous videos and of course this has to be on the list too. Support players that have the ammo bag or pouch selected but have no intention of dropping it for anyone but themselves deserve to be kicked off the server or at least educated on how to help your teammates out. It's really not difficult. Drop ammo. A little tip for those who drop ammo but want more points from doing so. When your team is pushing a flag or stuck behind a certain objective, run in, drop ammo and then back off again. All the dudes at the front spamming the nades and shooting will resupply from you and you'll get all the juicy points. You'll also stay alive because you're not right on the front line and you can use your LMG in the correct way, trying to suppress and take on enemies from a little bit more range. You don't always have to wait for someone to request ammo before you drop the gadgets. Next up we've got medic problems. This goes for both the guy reviving and the guy who needs to be revived. Firstly, if you're a medic, you should revive people whenever possible, but also be smart about it. I don't want to be revived if it means we'll both get instantly mushed by a tank seconds later, and the only reason you did it is because you wanted to gain a few more points and get on the final highlight scoreboard. Of course you should revive players, but it's all about picking the best option. Secondly, the dude who is being revived should consider the same thing before skipping back to the spawn screen. If the guy who isn't reviving you is being suppressed and can't pick you up, skip the revive, get back to the spawn screen and deploy quickly to help him out. This is a far more effective way of doing it, and let's be honest, who really cares that much about one extra death? Next up we've got wasting vehicles. Why is it that people, no matter what battlefield game or mode you're playing, insist on wasting vehicles for no meaningful gain? How many times have you seen players use a bomber to get on a high camping spot, or take a boat across the map full of players only to beach it and leave them all stranded? This sort of behaviour is not acceptable on the battlefield and players should really think about what they're doing before causing this sort of a problem and taking all of the friendly vehicles and ruining your chances of winning. The No Objective Guy 
PTFO. It's really simple. All you need to do in Battlefield 1 to win games is play the objective. Of course killing the enemy is really important and the best players always end up with a decent KD ratio and lots of numbers on the scoreboard, but when it comes down to winning the game, the objective is king. Having a player in your squad that never plays the objective is very frustrating, not only because they aren't helping you win, but also because you can never spawn on them when you die. They usually camp on the edge of the map or in a high place in order to snipe, and when you do spawn on them, it takes 5 minutes to get to the objective the rest of your team is pushing. Not cool. Next up we've got bad tactics. Conquest is a great example of how bad tactics can get you into trouble as a squad or team. When you cap a whole load of flags, most players get too focused on pushing the enemy back into their base and forget about the clever enemies that have flanked you and started to back cap. This is a bit of a weird one because you can't really be mad at people for not being good at the game, but at the same time I feel like a lot of people know they could go back and cap these flags, but they just can't be bothered. Finally, we have the bad tanker. A bad tank can really ruin a team's chances of winning a game, and there's really nothing worse than being in the tank with an awful driver. We've all been in the Mark V tank, sitting in the gunner seat, wanting to take on enemies, but the dude inside is more interested in driving flat out onto the objective without thinking about giving you an angle to fire. What makes it worse is that they usually get the tank destroyed, leaving your team at a disadvantage until the next one spawns. I've got nothing against players that are learning the game, and of course not everyone is a god in tanks, but there are some basics that normal players should all understand, and again it brings back that point that DICE should maybe bring in a test range or a little training scenario in order to teach players how they should be picking their vehicles and how they should be using them if they are lucky enough to spawn in one. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like down below, I'm going to be bringing out some more Battlefield 1 videos in the upcoming future, if you do enjoy, make sure you check them out. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.